This video is rated T or Tickle Me Pink. What is going on YouTube? Tickle Me Pink, your least favorite content creator here. We've covered the best weapons and builds you should be utilizing at level 2 traders, level 3 traders, and now I want to show you guys some of the best budget builds you can go ahead and utilize in Escape from Tarkov for this wipe. These are top tier rifles that are going to put people down, but also save you money. Whereas the other two series were more about getting the best rifles we could possibly utilize at that level and be somewhat cost effective, not buying parts off the flea market for absurd prices. This is going to be dialed in on just making sure we keep that price low, but make sure we're a big threat to anyone we run into. These are great if you're going to go ahead and do things like loot runs, as you're saving yourself money on your kit already, which is going to mean you're going to make more money. Or, for example, if you're running annoying quests, ones where you tend to die. Perhaps Lighthouse, for example. So, I'm going to have five different weapons that all fit that bill and fill different niches. So, you can go ahead and utilize ones that you need for whatever map you need or whatever situation you might need. So, what weapons are we going to be talking about today? First of course, we're going to have the AUG, followed by the SKS, the TX-15, the RFB, and the AK-12. And we'll talk more when we get to each one as to why we chose that weapon. I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Before we go any farther, I actually signed a contract with them where I have boxes to give out to you guys. If you've never had HelloFresh and you live in the US, I can get you guys free food this week. Just go ahead and shoot me a message on Discord. Tell me you're interested in the HelloFresh deal. I also get paid when I give you guys free groceries. So go ahead and get in contact with me. You're doing me a favor. I'm doing you a favor. Let's continue with the video. All right. First and foremost is the AUG. You guys have probably already heard about this one. It's just going to be your go-to cheap 556 five, weapon it comes almost fully built already you don't need to do a ton of modifying to this weapon it has a high rate of fire and it has relatively low recoil it's almost like a jack of all trades additionally it's very cheap to suppress you can't really have your attachment stripped off it because it's already almost fully built like we said it's pretty large so people aren't going to stuff it in backpacks and you tend to get it back on insurance quite a lot because it doesn't cost that much it's just a great overall weapon and you want to go ahead and utilize your 556 five, ammunition in the AUG if you want to run budget runs. Let's talk about modding this sucker. First and foremost, we're going to get the M1 high sight mount from Peacekeeper level 3 for $34. This is going to go ahead and let us put our optic of choice on the AUG A3. Up next, we have the T4 AUG suppressor from Peacekeeper 3. This goes for $366 or you can just flee this for 30,000 rubles. One of the cheapest 556 suppressors you can get your hands on, and one of the reasons why this build is so economical. Up next, I strongly recommend if you can get your hands on them to utilize 42 round AUG magazines. You're going to need Peacekeeper level 3 for these, and they go for $69. However, on the flea market, they're quite expensive, so just utilize 30 rounders. The reason we want to use 42 rounders in this instance is just because the AUG has a high rate of fire at 725 rounds per minute, and the higher capacity magazines are really going to help us in the 2-3 to three man situations where we're getting pushed really hard. Then I like to put a Balder Pro on it from Skier 2 for 9,000 rubles. And this leaves us with a total of 124,000 rubles, including the gun. Now, I haven't included the price of the optics on these builds because your optic is going to depend a lot based on your own personal preference as well as what map you're taking this to. But there's a couple of optics that I would recommend. I have the Elk Inspector, the Monstrum, or the Delta Point. They all fit nice niches. That was 4x, then 2x, then 1x. They all fill different niches, and they're all relatively cheap. Before we get into the next weapon, I just want to make sure you guys smash the dislike button and tell me to suck on a Glock in the comments down below. Alright, the next interesting build I have for you guys is the TX-15. Now, this weapon is very expensive. However, there is a trick for getting it astronomically cheap, and that is going ahead and utilizing the flea market. So, the TX-15 is found sometimes in weapons cases, but namely in marked rooms. And players that often don't know what they're worth, We'll go ahead and put them up on the flea market at the bottom of the price range. Veteran players tend to take off things like the meta stock, the meta suppressor, the rail, etc. And then sell what's left of the TX-15 onto the flea market. But if you just go ahead and favor this on your flea market, refresh after raid every now and then, you will be able to snipe fully built TX-15s for around 70,000 rubles. And that's what I personally do. It might go up a little bit or it might be a little bit harder to come by after this video. But just keep your eyes open. I've been doing this trick for years and telling people about this trick and I still get them all the time. Now, if you don't know what the TX-15 is, think of this as like the Big Brother ADAR. It is extremely snappy. It's a different rifle to the ADAR. It has a different lower receiver. You could put all the same attachments on ADAR, but it would actually perform differently. It has better recoil, better ergonomics. It's just a better rifle all around. So if you like semi-automatic rifles, you like 5.56, and you're a head tapper, this is going to be a phenomenal rifle for you. All right, you guys have a one massive fundamental choice to go ahead and make before you go any further, and that's do you want to run semi-automatic or do you want to turn this into an M4? It does have fully meta attachments already, 
So if you can get your hands on a, a lower receiver for an M4A1, you can go ahead and slot all the attachments over on to that M4 receiver and it is going to be automatic. So go ahead and make that decision. If you don't have any lower receivers that you can rip out easily and you want to run this fully automatic, you can go ahead and utilize the mechanic barter. What you'll need is four GP coins and you'll be able to get this M4 Lavoa trade. Pull the lower receiver off and sell everything else out and you're basically getting a lower receiver for at cost. You used to be able to buy low receivers, but they pulled that out of the game. Afterwards, you're just going to pull literally every attachment off and put it on the M4 receiver if you want to make this fully automatic. Now that we've decided this is going to be fully automatic or a DMR, let's go ahead and mod this thing. So I like to put the M-Lock angled foregrip from skier level 3 for 9,000 rubles on this. Then I like to follow it up with the Balder Pro from skier level 2 for 9,000 rubles. And then you're going to have two more choices remaining. So depending on if you chose to use this as a DMR or as a rifle, you're going to want to change up the stock. If you're using it as an M4, you can just leave the recoil reducing stock on it, no big deal. I personally feel like it's already really nice and you can go ahead and go for an ergonomic stock already. That's what I would personally do, but I know a lot of you guys like full recoil builds. But without a doubt, if you guys are utilizing this as a DMR, you're going to want to go ahead and put on the GL core stock from Skier 3 for 4,700 rubles. It's going to give you a massive boost to ergonomics. And if you're tapping heads, it's going to get you ADS on target immediately. So you always get first shots on target. And we'll utilize that stock back in future builds we'll talk about here in just a little bit. If you run this as an M4, then I'd probably put something like a Delta Point on it for a cheap 1x. And if you're using this as a DMR, then I would actually go with the ACOG optic for this. You want to make sure you're using the 4x ACOG. It has a yellow reticle. There's a tan and black variation of it. But you'll need to go ahead and use the Trijicon TA51 mount and then use the ACOG TA01NSN 4x scope from Peacekeeper 3 for $236. Depending on if you decide to make this automatic or not, you're looking at either spending around 100,000 rubles to 120,000 rubles if you made this automatic. So this weapon is insane. The only issue is just you have to kind of invest some time to make sure you get one off the flea market. By the way, if you guys are looking for people to play with, make sure to join the Discord in the description down below. We have tons of crews rolling every single day. Lots of good guys in there that'll help you with quests or just run raids with you if you're looking for some people to play Tarkov with. I personally hop in there and play with everyone myself, so if you'd like to play games with me, that is the spot. It's discord.gg forward slash took me pink. All right, remember that stock pad laying around? If we chose to run that as a DMR, we're going to go ahead and utilize this in our next build, and that is the AK-12. So the AK-12 is the highest rate of fire 545 rifle in the game. Historically, you would use something like the 74 U because the hidden stats carried it so much. But now that they've toned those down quite dramatically, the AK-12 is shining with its rate of fire and the recoil changes. Also, additionally, if you guys watched my magazine loadout preset video that showed you how to go ahead and do more damage, secure more kills, and also have less recoil, you'll know how strong 545 is while utilizing something like that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll have that linked in the top right. But the reason we're gonna go ahead and utilize the AK-12 is the AK-12, like I said, is the highest rate of fire 505 in the game. And you can get it on the flea market for around 35,000 rubles, which is just a crime. This is currently like the standard issue rifle in the Russian military, as far as I understand. It is a little squirrely, and that's why that stock from the TX-15 is going to come in handy. We're just going to go ahead and utilize that stock and put it right on the AK-12. It's free of charge if you utilize that TX-15. Then up next, we're going to go ahead and put a Balder Pro on this. Make sure you have a tactical light. I like to use the Osavets grip. It's a new grip. It's a very cheap. It has similar stats to the RK1. It's from skier level 3 for 14,000 rubles. I put on the AK saw pistol grip from mechanic level 2 for 5,000 rubles. And then something I like to do, it's a little trick that you'll see me to utilize in a lot of other builds, specifically loud builds, blast mitigation builds. I use the LaRue riser from mechanic level 2. This is going to go ahead and move your optic up and away from that muzzle flash so you're not flashing yourself so much and you can get more shots on target. I first learned this shit when I'm trying to utilize the delta point actually to get it off of the weapon a little bit so I have a better like sight profile. It's a good trick to utilize. Speaking of the delta point, we're going to go ahead and put the delta point on this because it's just a phenomenal cheap optic. But totaling this up without your choice of optic, you come in a total of around only 60,000 rubles, assuming that you do have that stock from the TX-15 we just talked about. If not, it's going to go up around 20,000 rubles, no big deal. And without the optic, you can put your choice of optic on it, and you'll see why we're using the AK-12. It is just dirt cheap to utilize, and it puts people down. I hope you guys appreciate the amount of time I spent looking at the best barters and the best flea market builds you could possibly utilize so you guys could go ahead and save money, lay more, and not have to do things like money runs. If you did, maybe consider subscribing. Level 58 in Tarkov right now. I had the highest KD in the top 100 arena. And I'm going to continue to give you guys great information from an actual Tarkov Chad. All right, this next build is going to have you guys actually smashing the dislike button. But I swear to God, build this and you will change your mind. It's actually a phenomenal build. And that is the RFB. It is your go-to 308 DMR for cheap this wipe that no one ever loots. 
Part of the reason why it's not looted is it is a god awful three by five amalgamation due to the scope optic that we're going to go ahead and utilize. But there's a reason for that, not just to be annoying to loot, but actually give the RV an advantage that it really struggles with. But besides the fact that you're going to get this weapon back all the time on insurance, the RFB slings 308s. As soon as you've done revision lighthouse, you have access to M80 at peacekeeper level three, and you will be putting people down so fast. I've ran a shitload of you guys through revision lighthouse. I know it's a pain in the ass to do. If you guys haven't unlocked that Amy yet and you are a peacekeeper three, just let me know and I got you. Back to the build, we're actually getting an RFB from the flea market for just 40,000 rubles. Then we're going to go ahead and utilize the RFP Thread Spacer from Ski Level 2 for 2,000 rubles. The AR-10 Thunder Beast Muzzle Brake for 12,000 rubles. Followed by the Ultra 5 Suppressor, we're utilizing the Skier 3 Barter for one boss cap, which goes for 10,000 rubles, and two leather caps for 15,000 rubles each right now. This is going to give us a damn near meta 308 Suppressor for relatively cheap. After that, we're going to utilize something crazy here, and we're going to be utilizing the Wrecking Angel 30mm Scope Mount from Jaeger 3. And the reason we're utilizing this is it gives us a Picatinny rail on top to give us a laser. That's something the RFE shows with it. It just doesn't have any Picatinny rails on the sides of the weapon, which means you can't have a tactical device, which means when you get caught in a close quarter situation, your point of fire is going to be really off target because you don't have a laser turned on. And this is going to get us around that. Inside of it, I've gone ahead and told you guys to slot a Burris TAC-30 scope. So normally in the previous builds, I told you that, you know, use your scope of choice. The reason I'm telling you guys to use this scope is it's a great one shoe fits all and it's also super cheap if you know about this barter and this barter comes from Jaeger level 2 and that's using three kvasses. Now kvasses can actually be relatively expensive however you're not going to be handing over full kvasses you're going to go ahead and utilize kvasses to hydrate your characters after raid drink them down to one use left and then once you have three of those laying around you're going to go ahead and turn them into burst stack three scopes which effectively makes them almost free. You are paying slightly more for a Kvass versus a standard water bottle, but when you math it out, it's just like a couple hundred rubles. And we're going to go ahead and utilize the Wilcox Raptor Range Fire from Jaeger 3 for 23,000 rubles. So this is actually going to give us the laser so we don't have that bloom on our point fire like I was talking about. And it's also a range fire. So if you really want to pop shots, like say you see someone 200 meters out, you can actually get the range. Go ahead and page up to 200 meters out and pop those easy headshots. This weapon does have a relatively good MOA and accuracy considering how short it is. It doesn't have like a whole lot of rifling with this weapon. For magazines, I'm using the MMW Polymer 20 round magazines just for the best stats. Come from Mechanic Level 2 and they go for 3,000 rubles. After that, I use the SI Cobra Foregrip Mechanic 3 for 10,000 rubles. You'll see that this thing looks like an absolute amalgamation. Like I said, it looks like some sort of Frankenstein weapon. I've intentionally made this thing ugly because you'll actually get it back more simply because it looks ugly, but it's just as effective if you were to make it full black. And this build comes out of a total of 137,000 rubles. All right, the last one we have to talk about is the SKS. So the SKS is absolutely phenomenal, this wipe. I had it in my best weapons for level two traders, and this build is gonna be going ahead and building on top of that level two build, but it's just a phenomenal rifle to go ahead and utilize your 7.62 ammunition, APP or BP you get your hands on. It's still a strong round. It's just things like the AKM, the mutant are just not feeling good this wipe. If you haven't seen my full weapon tiers for this wipe, I'll have that in the top right right now so you really get dialed in on what is meta to use this wipe. But we're gonna go ahead and utilize the SKS and we're specifically using the OPSKS. We're using the mechanic level three barter for three weapon parts. You can get these for around 15,000 rubles each at the time of recording this. And it comes already loaded with the full UAS chassis build, which is the best in slot and knocks all the other chassis out of the water and you're getting it for dirt cheap. Then we're gonna make sure we go ahead and utilize 35 round of magazines from Peacekeeper level three. These go for $142. You can use 20 round magazines. It's no big deal. I mean, it is a DMR at the end of the day. I just like to have 35s. I do get pretty aggressive with this and treat it more like a short range DMR. Up next, we're getting the Leapers SKS UTG Pro Mount from Jaeger level two for 10,000 rubles. And then I personally like to run this with an ACOG or a flip up site. If you guys wanted me to do a video on why I always use the flip up site, even though it is bugged, I can do that. And we can talk more about optics and when you should use what. There's a lot of misconceptions about optics in this game. And like I said, I use an optic that's bugged. It has more recoil, but it also feels a very niche use that gets me a lot of kills. Then the Balder Pro from Ski Level 2 for 10,000 rubles, all with the Zenit DTK 4M suppressor from Ski Level 3 for 55,000 rubles. You can actually find this on the flea market for 24,000 rubles right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys the trader price because I do think this is going to shoot up in value, but if it doesn't, you should be in the clear to get a really cheap suppressor. You're going to need the thread adapter from Jaeger Level 2, by the way, for 2,000 rubles. The total for this SKS build is going to come out at 111,000 rubles without the optic. Once again, go ahead and choose your optic of choice. And hopefully you guys appreciate these five budget builds. 
If you haven't seen how to exactly build out your injectors case and unlock things like berserk mode, I'll have that on screen right now. I look forward to seeing you guys in the live stream and on the Discord. Links in the description.